you already expressed some of the unique needs you were meeting, mm -hmm. but what exact unique need were you meeting when you decided to go nonprofit? That nuance. Mm. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. So I think the the need, the specific need that we're meeting is that uh, in Lakeland, prior mm -hmm. to Catapult, there wasn't a space, there wasn't a place where entrepreneurs felt safe to explore their ideas. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, a coffee shop is a great space, and a lot of our guys go to coffee shops and um, and meet there. But the the back end and the support of that. So mm -hmm. there's yes, there's gathering places where great ideas can happen. But what happens when you get to that point in that conversation where you're like dude, I don't know what type of legal entity I should be, mm -hmm. or should I go not-for-profit or for-profit, or I think I'm ready to hire someone, but I don't really know how to do that, or <laughs> I didn't keep my books last year mm -hmm. because I didn't know this was a real business, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in a mess with my accounting. Mm -hmm. And so when those great conversations happened, um, we felt like there was this need to have a space where they could come to, hey, I need help, mm -hmm. uh, or hey, you know, here's a person and here's a person, we can put these two people together, you're great at you know, connecting people and another person might be great at marketing and another person might be great at the IT side. Mm -hmm. So creating a space where people can really kind of come together. And so I think that was the need, was a, was a well, physical space. I guess more specifically, um, there's another space going in town, uh, my office and more, yep. and I talked to Kate Lake and, and her model for the viewers is for profit. Yep. Um, and so obviously she has to focus on other things for now, like mm -hmm. filling out that space to meet her her budget and whatnot, but in essence, she's almost trying to hit that same need. I guess mm -hmm. what I'm articulating is um, when you guys have already identified that need and you're sitting here discussing, should we just do this for profit or nonprofit? Was that inspired by, I don't know, a need to give lower rents or something mm -hmm. to people? Yeah. Like, what was what need did you think you were meeting in going nonprofit? Yeah. Or I guess so, why did you choose yeah. nonprofit? So we looked at and we love Kate and I'm so totally for Kate and mm -hmm. I. I think what's great for Kate is great for us and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And so for us, um, we've seen so many of these models all over the country. We've seen ones that have done well. We've seen ones that have crashed and burned. Okay. And so kind of looking at those different models and most of the ones um, that are for profit, you know, it's, it's more of a real estate. You know, we need to fill these offices and that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. so for us... I always joke that if you're trying to make money off of entrepreneurs, you're barking up the wrong tree because they don't have it. <laughs> but, like missions, it, yeah. but it really does allow, so obviously and we're heavily subsidized by the LEDC and our partners. Okay. So it allows us to keep rents really low. So $50 for co-working space, mm -hmm. which is a half to a quarter of what other spaces are charging. Yep. And so we're, allowed, we're able to keep it really low for you guys. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that way we can provide other programs, we can do other things, yeah. because we have additional sources of income that are coming in. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the sense I got from interacting uh, with Kate, and it's very early in her project, yeah. um, uh, just, I guess, to compare and contrast a little bit, it felt like, I guess when we talked about, we, when we talked about the benefits of her space, mm -hmm. she never really brought up education, training, mm -hmm. workshop, when is, I mean, she did here or there, like, I'd like to do training, but it mm -hmm. kind of sounded like it was, I'd like to do training eventually. Mm -hmm. You guys have always, I guess from day one, as far as, the ethos is how can we equip these people? Mm -hmm. How can we equip these people and get them launched and get them out? And, yeah. and, um, and for, again, for reference, they have workshop Wednesdays here, which are huge, the mentoring program, which I've taken advantage of, and a lot of people have. Mm -hmm. um, there's people holding courses all the time. In fact, um, tell them about the college interaction real quick. Yeah, so we have five colleges and universities here in Lakeland, and they have kind of come together and created a 16-week, one-semester course um, and it brings all the students together. It's an innovation and design course. Mm -hmm. So we call it interdisciplinary. So you may have a Florida Southern marketing student, a Kaiser graphic student, uh, you know, a Southeastern business student. And so they're working on teams together mm -hmm. to solve real problems in Lakeland. So the last one they did was how do we create a more connected Lakeland? Mm -hmm. So is that, does that mean bikeability and walkability? Does that mean technology? What does that mean? And so it's just been a really cool interaction for the students yeah. who would never cross paths before mm -hmm. um, to be able to come here to Catapult and really focus focus on, you know, how do you brainstorm and how do you come up with ideas and how do you really apply those? That's huge. And that's that training component I think I was talking about. And the other benefit and we've talked about, well, I guess we've all talked about this said before, mm -hmm. is the cross-pollination of the students. It, it um, I guess it prevents to some degree, um, or I guess it creates stickability. Yep. Um, the students start to see themselves as a role or a part uh, of the community instead of just their campus and then they go back home to their home cities but they actually see this as a possibility, as a possible future here, because uh, they're interacting with a lot of people. Um, organizationally, mm -hmm. um, what weaknesses or challenges have you had or things you haven't managed well that if someone else was in 
Timbuktu starting something similar, you'd be like, okay, I, we made this mistake. So what are some of the weaknesses you guys have had? Uh, 